Hi guys, now today we're talking about something very special, which is this, the brand new Noor Art Lens from Lomography. This is a 64 millimeter handcrafted manual focus lens that has two unique and interesting features. Firstly, it has this control knob here that allows three separate levels of control over spherical aberration. And secondly, it allows drop-in aperture plates that will affect how bokeh appears in images, especially when there are light sources in the frame. The lens draws inspiration from an Egyptian scientist named Hassan al haytham who was born at the end of the 10th century. He's often referred to as the father of modern optics, and he was the first to note the existence of spherical aberration, which is where light passing through the edges of a lens focuses closer than light passing through the center causing an almost diffused haze over the entire image, making the frame almost glow. Now, the guys over at Lomography thought that this would be really interesting to incorporate into a, line, a lens that's designed specifically for portraiture, which prioritizes this kind of effect over technical perfection, which in theory allows for inc some incredibly creative portraits. Now, this lens that I have is actually a prototype that Lomography have sent me in order to test it and give my honest thoughts, which is what I'll be doing in this video. However, they have no control over what I say and they haven't paid me to do this. So I will be being completely open and honest with my thoughts, whilst bearing in mind that it is a prototype and not yet the finished article. In order to test the lens out, I shot some portraits of the incredibly talented Jake Smithies, both here in the studio and outside as well, to see that how the lens would hold up. In the studio, I decided to set up some shots with some fairy lights in the background to really accentuate the effect of the dropping aperture plates and to show the difference between the different levels of spherical aberration, which you can see in these images here. We then headed outside to use some of the natural foliage along with different buildings to make some really interesting backgrounds, which is where this lens really shines. In many ways, quite similar to the Lomography Petzval lens that I've reviewed on the channel before. So having used the lens in both settings and having sat down and actually looked through the images, here are my thoughts. Firstly, in terms of build quality, the lens itself is very well made. As I said, it's a handcrafted brass construction that feels both solid and well, ba well balanced when on a camera such as the Sony a7R4. The spherical aberration lever is solid but moves freely and the focusing and aperture rings are the same. They're super smooth, but they will only move when you want them to. 
However, I do feel like the dropping aperture plates, which I believe are 3D printed, are not anywhere near the same standard as the rest of the lens. They aren't perfectly round, and in fact, they've got some slightly jagged edges that could scratch you or your lens or your camera. This may be something that's improved by the time that the lens is ready for release, but I do think that it's definitely something worth mentioning as it is something that I noticed pretty much straight away. With regards to ease of use, as mentioned, the focusing, changing of aperture and changing the spherical aberration lever are all super easy, no stress whatsoever. When you're using focus peaking on your camera especially, making sure that you're in focus isn't too challenging and I don't think that this lens actually has a steeper learning curve as something like the Petsfall lens does. One negative that I would say is that changing the dropping aperture plates is quite time consuming as the thread is quite a long one. It is a little bit fiddly and it does require a lot of turning. So unless you've got plenty of time, if you're gonna use one of the plates, pick one and stick to it in order to save time. In terms of the quality of the images produced, I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised when I looked through the files. Whilst the use of dropping aperture plates isn't personally to my taste, I did notice that the effect is much less aggressive than I'd anticipated it to be. And it certainly does allow for some interesting backgrounds to be created. With regards to the spherical aberration control, I found all three levels to produce different effects as you would expect. And to be honest, I'm not actually sure yet which one I prefer. I do feel that all of them have got their different qualities depending on what is the purpose of the shoe. Classic, which is in the middle, does exactly what it says on the tin. It gives smooth backgrounds that accentuate the subject without imposing on the image itself. When you move it to the left, you go to soft, you get that hazy soft focus look that I mentioned in the introduction. Almost kind of like a pro mist type filter has been used. And then move it over to the right to what they hilariously call bubble. Uh, it gives the sharpest results whilst making the image, uh, make, well, sorry, whilst making the background really pop. To be honest, I can see this lens being very useful for portrait photographers who want the versatility to take different types of images without changing lens or having to add filters. With the 64 millimeter focal length, it's a really, really nice one to work with. And it's actually the first fixed focal length lens at this focal length that I've ever used, only ever using 50 mil or 85 millimeter before. And this does sit nicely in the middle, allowing for both environmental portraits and more headshot head style images. It's definitely not a lens for everyone and the dropping aperture plates aren't to everybody's taste, but I was pleasantly surprised by this lens. One thing that I can't comment on at this point is value for money, as I don't believe that Lomography have set the price yet, and if they have, I certainly don't know it. I do think though that price will be important, as this is a creative lens, which means that I think in the majority of photographers' bags, this will be a lens that's carried in addition to other lenses and not instead of them. And then one final thought is, I think that this would be a very interesting lens to try out for video. Now this is not something that I've tried, uh, not something that I've tested as it's not my forte, but I do think because of the aesthetic that this lens can give, I think it'd be very interesting to try out for kind of like video portraits. You've got the option of using that soft focus kind of dreamy look, pro mist type look, or you can still switch it across the bubble and get really sharp uh, really sharp images but still have that background really pop in video as well so it's almost like a vintage aesthetic with all the benefits of a modern lens so that's definitely something to try out as well and yeah that's my overall thoughts on the Lomography No Art 64mm lens I have no idea when you'll be seeing this video as like I say this is a prototype at the moment but I think with the issues with the aperture plates and the build quality I think if you improve those, maybe get that thread a little bit faster and a little bit easier to use. I think this is definitely a fantastic creative tool for portrait photographers. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.